So in this video, we're going to talk about the idea of uh, SO3, sulfur trioxide. And is, is this molecule polar or not? Well, the first thing I'd like to do in determining if my molecule is polar, as you guys have seen, is to draw the Lewis structure. And so we know that sulfur, we have one sulfur atom and we have three oxygen atoms. Right, so I'm doing this to count out the total number of electrons that I have to place pretty much valence electrons to be specific. Uh, so we know that sulfur is oxygen's cousin. Uh, so sulfur has six valence electrons and we know that oxygen has six valence electrons. Now we should know by now that three times six is 18 plus another six would be 24. So we have 24 total electrons that we have uh, to place, right? And we get the three times six because oxygen carries three valence electrons and it's uh, three oxygen atoms. Um, oxygen, I'm sorry, Sorry, oxygen carries six valence electrons, and we have three oxygen atoms, so that's three times six. So again, usually, again, the middle central atom will be, or uh, typically the atom that's furthest to the left in the molecular formula. Not always the case, but um, uh, that's typically the rule of thumb. All right, so we have a sulfur uh, that is uh, surrounded by three oxygens. Mm. So we have a sulfur molecule that's surrounded by three oxygens. All right, so at this point, we should not be surprised um, if a sulfur, sulfur is also one of those um, atoms that can have an expanded octet. So if we see more than eight electrons around the atom, um, that should be, uh, that shouldn't come as a surprise. Right? So at this point, I'm gonna start out so I could form single bonds between uh, the sulfur and the oxygens. And so this far, three times, uh, two because each single bond works uh, works um, uh, each single bond carries two valence electrons um, uh, so at this point we have placed uh, six electrons out of the total 24 that we have to place I could also form possibly a double bond uh, between uh, this sulfur and the oxygen now remember oxygen is one of those atoms that typically satisfy the octet rule and so at this point I have four electrons around the top oxygen and <clears throat> Let's leave a sulfur for a minute since it's quote unquote octet is full. It has eight electrons around it. So let's kind of play with the oxygen before we move on. All right. So the top oxygen, I could actually put uh, two pairs of lone pairs. And I think this will satisfy the octet, right? So now I have two double bonds. I'm sorry, I have a double bond or uh, two single bonds if you want to look at it like that. Um, essentially, that's equal to four electrons plus the two pairs of lone pair equal to six. So the top oxygen's octet is satisfied. All right. I could also possibly form a double bond between um, this oxygen and the sulfur and do the same thing, right? So the oxygen's octet at this point will be satisfied, two, four, six, eight, and I could possibly do the same thing at this junction. Mm -hmm. Now let's count how many total electrons we've thus a place, right? We have uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 22, 24. Right? So this is a plausible lower structure for the sulfur trioxide molecule. Now, like we said before, uh, the sulfur contains more than eight electrons, but sulfur is one of those atoms that is allowed to have an expanded octet. So we shouldn't be surprised if the number of atoms, a uh, number of electrons around the sulfur is more than eight. Right. So how do we determine if the molecule is polar or not? Well, we know that from the periodic table, oxygen is just above sulfur. And typically, um, the electronegativity trends in that direction going upwards in the periodic table and to the right. And so therefore, we know that oxygen is going to be more electronegative than the sulfur atom. Right. So therefore, if we're drawing our dipole moments, uh, we could say that the sulfur is going to gain a partial positive charge because it's going to lose the electrons right and the oxygen is going to be more the, the electrons going to be concentrated at the oxygen because it's more electronegative and i can also draw the same thing here and i can also do the same thing for this top oxygen right so based on our dipole moments is the molecule polar or not sulfur trioxide is actually a nonpolar. Now, why is this? We have a net dipole moment. Why? Because the molecule is asymmetrical. Right? The molecule is symmetrical. And what that means is that if I draw a line through the center of the molecule, I should get 
two things that's equal on both sides of the molecule. All right, so that is why the molecule is symmetrical. Another way of looking at this is through the dipole moments. Uh, you've seen classically in my video that typically if you have dipole moments that are tail to tail, uh, this is a net zero dipole moment, so it cancels out. Right? The same thing is applicable here within our sulfur atom. So, uh, so if we look at the two on the wing, the one right here and the one right here, this dipole moment is in this direction. And this dipole moment, the other dipole moment is in this direction. The net addition between these two is actually straight down. Right? And so we have another one that's going to the top oxygen that's straight up. And so this is why the dipole moments essentially cancel themselves out. So that's another way of looking at it. Right? Overall, the the point from this um from this uh the little topic is that because the molecule is symmetrical, the dipole moments essentially cancel out. But also, this is an excellent, excellent alternative of looking at it that way. And real quick, to differentiate between why SO2 is nonpolar and SO3 is actually um, polar, is that if you look at lower structure for SO3, and let me draw this real quick, um, SO2, I'm sorry, we actually have a pair of lone pair on uh the sulfur atom. And so what that does is that it actually bends the molecule down and so our dipole moments become uh, something like this. And so if we do our addition of these two dipole moments, the net dipole moment will go down in this direction. And so we do have a net dipole moment and so hence why SO2 is actually polar, SO3 is nonpolar.